morning, everyone, and happy Saturday. My name is Callie, and this is another weekend of Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee. By the way, check out my little supervisor there. Luke found a box. That's the only reason why we get deliveries these days. In case you were wondering, that first piece that I played is called Pavan, and it's a gorgeous piece by Foray, and it's been arranged for clarinet and piano, which is what I played here. And you can actually get this piece on the Tom Play app. And so today I'm not actually gonna give you guys any music to practice. If you do want to post on my Facebook page, I would love for you to play anything long and legato and beautiful that you happen to be working on. Or if you do have the Tom Play app and you wanna play this and post it on my Facebook page, that would be wonderful. I would love to hear everyone's interpretation on this particular piece. But I thought this would be a great example of just some long legato playing and and uh, in one of the areas of the instrument that can be very, very difficult to sound beautiful in. And as a side note, the Tom Play app is actually doing a 30% off promotion until September 13th. So if you click on the link below, um, that should take you to the page and you can get the annual subscription for 30% off. And so the uh, really quick, the annual subscription gives you access to the entire library of music um, on the Tom Play app. If that's not what you're into and you just want a couple of pieces, that's totally cool. They also sell their scores and the backing tracks separately for about the same price as any other score that you would buy anywhere else. Um, the added bonus is that you get a backing track that's recorded by live musicians. And one of the coolest things about uh, some of the updates that uh, I've, I've noticed on the Tom Play app is that they actually have an interactive fingering chart. Now the interactive fingering chart isn't on every single score. Some of the newer scores will have it. The older scores don't, but their website has a totally free interactive score. So if you were playing on one of the older scores and you don't know a fingering to the note, you can actually go straight to the website and the fingering chart there and figure out the fingering for whatever note uh, you want. And I find this helpful um, for, for students who are practicing like super high register stuff on those altissimo notes. Sometimes it can be hard to remember the fingering. So um, it's, it's great to be able to just click on a note and be able to click and get the fingering for it. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started in our lesson today and the few tips I'm gonna give you on getting a beautiful sound in legato playing. All right, so the first thing that most people will ask me is, Callie, how can I sound less fuzzy or airy? And that's a really big one. So if you're, if you're playing on a reed and a mouthpiece and an instrument that's very comfortable for you and, and you like the equipment that you're playing on, then the, the next thing you should do is address how you're breathing and what you're doing with your air and with your embouchure and everything. And so assuming that, that your reed is balanced and, and in good condition and you've got good equipment, um, my first suggestion is to make sure you're breathing in a very big, deep breath. And I imagine filling up as much as possible so that I can relax the air out. And as you go into your relaxed exhale, you wanna make sure that you also blow a very fast, focused stream of air. So this is where high tongue position will come in handy because it'll keep your air super focused and laser beam focused to the very front part of your mouth. Now, if you're like, okay, I'm breathing great and I'm using high tongue position and my air is focused, the next thing I want you to do is think about what you're doing with your embouchure. So a lot of times when we go into playing these long legato passages, uh, we tend to bite and grip and close off the reed to the point where it doesn't vibrate as much as it should. So I'd like you guys to just think about your embouchure basics, right? Keep your chin flat, keep your corners, instead of pulling backwards towards your ears, point your corners in ooh, toward the center. So that way you have a little bit of flexibility right down here for the reed to vibrate against. And then the one big secret that a lot of folks won't tell you is that you actually have muscles up here 
that you can engage when you play it. So if you push down on the top of the mouthpiece with your top lip, you set your embouchure, you have your teeth on your mouthpiece, corners going in, and then press your top lip down. It can help just really focus your airstream and keep everything tucked in nicely so you're not leaking air all over the place and it keeps the sound instead of puffing through the cheeks, it just goes straight forward. So give that a try, keep the embouchure nice and tight. Now, if you're like, well, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm doing that right, I, I would like to suggest that you actually have a mirror on your stand and I think a lot of you guys have probably seen one of my earliest videos, clarinet embouchure checklist. And in that video, I actually have a little mirror and I'm not even kidding. I, I don't use this mirror. Okay, I used it once to put on my makeup, but that's it. I use it every day actually to check my embouchure to make sure I'm not doing anything totally weird. And I just sit there and I'll either do my scales or I'll play some long tones or a passage of music that I can play almost from memory and I'll just watch my face to see if I'm I'm doing anything weird and you guys know I have this weird habit sometimes I pull my corners back when I get tired right so I try to keep my corners forward and I try to um, I try to make sure that when I'm getting fatigued that I'm not clamping that I'm actually using the muscles in my face so having a little mirror can really really help with that the next thing is uh, how you actually hold your instrument and where your leverage points are and how your jaw is positioned against the reed. So if um, it might sound kind of funny that that all of that will affect the tone, but it, it does. So um, I'd like you guys to imagine that you have two points of balance on your instrument. It's between your thumb and your top teeth and instead of playing with your angle out like super far like 90 degrees like that it's totally cool if that's what you do but that's not what I teach so if you're looking for a sound similar to me then give this a try okay so um, instead of playing at like a 90 degree angle bring your angle and bring the instrument of your angle in just a little bit so it's more like a 45 degree angle or so depending on your teeth Okay, and when you go to play, push up with your thumb against your teeth like that. So then, all of a sudden, your hands are free and you can do whatever. And you have the added bonus of total balance between your thumb and your top teeth. So now you don't have to clamp down on the mouthpiece with your jaw to keep the mouthpiece from wobbling and slipping around. So pressure against the top teeth. Now, I've got one other thing. Go grab a pencil, I'm gonna go grab mine. So the last thing I want you to try, this is like totally weird, but it works, okay? So if you've got your thumb and your top teeth angle nice and firm right there and you got a good grip and you form your embouchure, I want you to take your pencil and put it here on your top lip while also keeping pressure against your top teeth. Eh. This is totally weird, but like this, like this, okay? And then I want you to take a nice deep breath, forming your good embouchure, and pretend that your air is a pencil shape and you're focusing all of your air for this point in your mouth right behind your teeth, which happens to be where the reed is, right? So you put this in, you imagine your pencil shaped air. Nice big deep breath, high tongue position, slightly more 45 degree angle instrument, and really fast laser beam focused stream of pencil shaped air, your tone is going to be so much more pure and round and pretty. 
All right, guys, that's about it that I have for today. I hope you guys learned a little something and I look forward to hearing what you guys post on my Facebook page. So if you have this on your Tom Play app, go ahead and head over there and play it. Otherwise, I wanna hear anything, anything you're working on that's legato and beautiful and, and just so lovely. So thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful weekend, have a good rest of your week, and I'll see you next Saturday for another weekend of clarinets, cats, and coffee. Happy practicing.